back with you part five of this titanic reconstruction um thank i'll start by saying thank you to all of you for all your kind comments and uh, all your questions about doing this um some questions are kind of uh, how far do i want to go with this or about rabbit holes and this that and the other um well yeah i i I mean, the other thing I'm, I'm getting asked, why don't I just use filler? I don't want to use filler. I said at the outset I want this to be plastic uh, so that I can glue my plastic sheeting to it. Um, I don't want to use photo etch brass. I want to use plastic sheeting so that everyone else can copy me and learn along if they want to and do it. Um, the other thing is I don't want to just cover it in filler because it makes loads and loads of dust. It's loads and loads of work to try and file and carve and get the shape right. I find this a lot easier. And... I'd just rather do it like this. This is the way I'm doing it. So that's that. <laughs> that is it. Um, other people have said, why don't I just put plastic inside and sand it through? Again, this is the way I like to do things. So this is the way I'm doing it. So that is that. So what I'm going to do now is, as we said at the end of part four, I'm going to look at actually getting this section here to come out now and meet with this part here. Now, I'm staggering these cuts. I don't want to cut down where this one is because we'll have a join going right through. So if I stagger these cuts, I'll then have a lap there, almost like you do with a with a lap brick joint. So as you know, I always start my cuts by doing a scribe. So we'll scribe down here, first of all. And this isn't like scribing panel lines on an aircraft. I'm gouging this in here and really sort of butchering it out because they're going to be deep lines. So in the case of that one, it's going to be a cut line. So I'll start by going gently here and as you can see it's pushing the rule away and the scriber wants to follow along the um, along these raised straight lines so that's something to look out for. So I'm just going to go along here now carefully. See it just wants to go along that line there. So it's best to sort of get that done first, get these deep areas done first. And then you should find it go through a lot easier. Should be an operative word, and this is all going pear shaped because it's on camera, which is as per normal. Oh come on! Luckily, this doesn't matter. If this, you can imagine if this was a a beautiful twenty fourth scale Spitfire or something, and I was scribing panel lines on the spine. Bloody scribers going all over the place. So even though that's, you know, it's really deep now, even though it's really deep, it's still trying to follow that bloody raised line. But as I just said, it's all going to be covered up, so it doesn't really matter. The other thing that doesn't help is I've got a camera, and you, you all do modelling, guys. Imagine doing this at arm's length with a camera here, right there. There it is, here, see? There we go. There we are. So that's that done. So we can get our saw out now and start doing some cutting. I'm going to deepen this a bit more. I don't really want to go through. If I do go through one place, it doesn't really matter. Not at all. Here, I've gone through there. I've just gone through there. So means it's nice and thin anyway, it's going to come out easily. And as I say, this is the all important part. As I said at the end of part four, no stress. Not you not having any stress, the model not having any stress. Now I may decide to get some of this out here as well, but we shall see. Um, I'll probably just blend all that in and sand it. Um, so I want to get in here now with a saw and cut it. looking at it, I may end up cutting this thing out so that I can actually bring it out rather than just have it folded here. So let me grab a nice saw. Oh, very typical, I can't find the saw. There it is. Hiding in the corner, even though I was using it an hour ago. Right, so...
Anyway, if you've got a Titanic model, guys, and you live in the UK, then you may want to have a go at this because I reckon by the end of this week, I reckon by before the 4th of January, so before everyone goes back to work after the new year, I reckon we're all going to be locked down again. And now I'm going to use I've got a bag here. This is a bag of all the broken blades. So really handy to use. See all those broken bits on there. You could just get that blade in there and use it to cut the end. Oops. That's the only problem with these blades. They are bloody good, but they are brittle. And that's why they're good, because they're hard, they're brittle. You can't have it soft and You can't have it, um, you know, hard for cutting and have it ductile. It's, it's impossible unless you did just the edge and then the price would go up. Right, so there we go. That's cut away now. So that should be able to just bend up. But um, I'm going to have to get my hand inside there to do that. And I'm not sure. Oh, I've got the bloody Vauxhall deck on, which was silly. That could easily damage all that part of the plastic on top of there. So get that deck out of the way. Now I'm not sure if I can get my hand. Yeah, I should be able to. And in there and push that out. There we go. It doesn't want to come, so obviously I need to do some more scraping up here. I use a saw. It's because it's on a curve, isn't it? I didn't think of that. Because it's on a curve, it's it's fighting itself. So um, what I need to do is basically cut it out and manipulate it. So that's what we'll do. We'll cut it out and manipulate it. And I think we'll also put a cut along here and pull this up. So um, I'll get it done off camera and then I'll come back when I've got it cut out. Okay, so that's that piece out. So we'll... Uh... No, not you, <laughs> I just said, oh, she thinks I'm talking to her. So grab a sanding stick and just clean off these edges. Get rid of the hairy bits because we don't want hairy bits, do we guys? We don't like hairy bits. Hairy bits get in the way of things, don't they? So um, that can basically go in there now and be tipped over. Now because it's going to be tipped over, I am just going to put a bit of an angle on here. I think I'll scrape it first. I'm just going to put a bit of an angle on here. So that when it goes over it will meet. There we go. Okay, so that's going to fit in there like that. I think what I'll do is get some tape on it and then I can show you what I'm going to do. So that's going to fit in there like that. And hopefully it will stay there. Um, If we put the cardboard template on, we can see that we're kind of getting the shape we want, but we've got a massive gap here, so we've got to fill that gap in at the top. Or we could fill the gap in at the bottom. But I'd rather fill the gap in here because then that'll it means I'll only be sanding and blending in one area. This here is pretty much correct, so just that'll just be a case of wiping over with a sander just to get the the shape but up here I'm going to be doing some serious work to get the proper shape there to blend this station into the next so we can see there that in place 
I need to really, really pack that out. Now I've got a, that's going to be too thick. Um, maybe a Q-tip. Come on, just tip over. Q-tips tend to be about two and a half mil thick, don't they? There we go, that's about right. A little bit too much, so probably two millimetres. Need to get something in there two millimetres thick and just um, pack that out. But also, it needs to be raised up so here. It's going to have to be raised up so it needs blending in. So, I may well put a cut here and just raise this up. We shall see. Okay, so I've got a piece of uh, scrap two millimetre plastic. Here's my scrap plastic box and just going to put that in there, try and hold it all together, which because the camera's on it's not going to work. I just tried this off camera and it just went together like it was meant to be. And you can see that if I put that two millimetre in there it's going to be too thick. Okay, it's too much at the top. So we need something thinner. So I need to either try and find some one and a half mil or just cut up some one millimetre strip or some thinner pieces and um, and go from there. Now what we're going to end up with is a tapered joint anyway, <clears throat> so we're going to have to stack it out. Um, I've decided I'm not going to cut this because it's going to be quite difficult to get it to meet because if I come that way it's going to affect the level of the um, the level of the uh, keel and if I go this way then this is going to come up so I'm better off just um, blending it out with some plastic or something. So if I put this piece of card down in here, further down, we should see, we put our template in, there we go, it's almost like I planned it. So I know that whatever thickness this plastic card is, at this point here, it's the right thickness. So I think what I'm going to do is glue this in along this bottom edge, let it just sort of start to go off, and then we'll be able to play with it once the glue's hardened. Right, so we got our good old trusty Ravel contactor. Get a good healthy, sorry, get a good healthy wet bead along there. Slap it on. And then we can place that on there. Like so. And then let the glue do its thing. Oops. Just have that flush along there because I know that all this is okay. I know this top edge is okay. If it was too far in, I'd step it out. If it was too far out, I'd step it in. But I know that it's okay. So I'm just going to glue that there and let that start to go off. Let it start to gel. And then after that's uh, all put in a proper position, we'll go over it with the sprue goo again and we'll get it all sorted. Okay, so that's sort of gelled off now. If you remember, I said I had a piece of two mil plastic card and it was too thick. So what I've done is sanded it down, I don't know if you can see, sanded it to a wedge. So what I can do now is come along with this card template. Try and get you a bit more in screen. Um, and... Hold that in place and then I can push this piece of plastic in behind. I know you can't see what I'm doing, I'm just pushing this piece of plastic in which I've sanded and I've managed to move it over now. So I'll tell you what, I'll start with the piece of plastic in there, that's the best thing. Okay, and you can see that by doing that we've got the form. So I can put that up there. Come along, which I haven't prepared myself for with my Mr. Cement S. Put plenty in there. Close that up. Whoops. Plenty in there. Let it really get itself welded in. You want a nice solid joint. Remember guys, once all this is done, 
to leave it for a while and let it settle because these joints will all be quite soft for quite a while. So just to do a quick check, yep, we're there. So happy with that. So and I'm just going to run some of that down in there just to get that joint make sure it's all got glue in it and then what we can do then with all these bits and so you can see I've got all these scraps of plastic card down here oh people have been asking is this a Phil Flory sanding stick clear because you know we always wipe these on our jeans and we end up making holes in our jeans no this is basically the bottom of an old pair of jeans you can see where I've scuffed it out here this is just basically the bottom of an old pair of jeans so they didn't cost anything when you've got a pair of jeans that you've ripped the ass out of or you've worn away the knees or worn away from wearing sanding sticks on there then just cut the bottoms off the legs and um, th this is what I use now for cleaning my sanding sticks just like so so you can see it does the same job as wiping it on your jeans but you're not wrecking your jeans all the time so and I've basically got it here because if, if I don't it just slides away whenever I try and do anything so I've got me bits of plastic card here now, so we'll find some little piece, that's a piece out of a kit there. Um, so we'll just find some little pieces and wedge them in where we can. So that's going to wedge in there. And that's weird because that's going to go all the way up to there. And yet it's, it's one and a half mil thick, so what I'm going to do is sand that down into a wedge shape. And then we can see that it fits in there a lot nicer. And then some Mr. Cement S into there. Job done. And then we've got some thinner bits here. And that's going to slide in. So I'm going to find another piece. Well, there's another piece there which is quite nice. That's going to slip in there, look. I'll just sand the back down because it's the thing is it's a tapered joint we've got so obviously if it fits in at the at the right hand side it doesn't fit in on the left there we go just edge that along plenty of glue get it all nice and wet And then some real scrappy thin pieces of real scrappy thin plastic. Get it nice and wet and give it a little nudge. Once you get it softened a bit, it'll go in a lot easier. And then pieces like this are great when they're wedge shaped because you can get these into little areas like in there. Get that in like that. Can you imagine if the engineers on Titanic could have got in the water and done this as she was going down? They might have saved her. There we go. That's gone in there nicely. And then we can find some real thin bits of five and ten thou and stuff and just see if that's going to go in anywhere. Like I can see I've got a little gap there. So yeah, if I just grab my knife wherever it may be and make a, a wedge shape that's a sharp blade, isn't it? I should be able to just slide that down in. There we go, that fills in the gap. I'm not forcing any of this because if I force it, I'll push it apart. And I don't want to do that. Okay, and then we'll get another bit of this thin. This should go in the end here. There we go, that'll go in. In fact, what I'll do is I'll cut this into two pieces. And then I should be able to put that one in first. 
get it nice and wet. What happens is you're basically making sprue goo when you get it all nice and wet. It'll all go in there and just all weld itself together. And there we are, that is that. I'm just going to get in behind if I can and push that piece. Where am I? I can't get in there. I just want to lift that piece up slightly. Right, there we go. So that's uh, that's all got some sprue goo in around it now. And that's all being left to dry. Um, just something just dawned on me. I'm not sure if I mentioned this before in part three or part four, but this here, um, I know some of you are probably thinking, why don't you just cut all this out together in one piece and then deal with it? The reason I didn't do that is because it's all about keeping rigidity in the hull. If I cut all this out, okay, I would only have that there keeping it all together. And um, with a fairly short area, well, a very short area here, there's not much moment to stop it all becoming a parallelogram. So with that there in there, it sort of helps it stay square because this whole area here has to stay square. This whole area here has to stay square. So it can't really flex around that point. But if you cut all this out, you enable these two parts to move. I'm finding it very difficult to explain. If, if you, if you imagine if you had a pivot here and a pivot here and a pivot here and you put something solid between there it can't move but if you take it all out it can move yeah um, much like if I put that in there if I put that in there yeah I can't close it up I can't do anything with it but if I take it away it's all part loose so that's why I left that in there because it was sort of jamming it all together well it's easy to show you on here you can see how it's all jamming it all together on this side so if I remove that whole area there this one will just be free to become a parallelogram if you like so um, once I've done this side and it's all solid and I could probably cut this out in one no problem but uh, with that like that I don't know so um, that's why I'm taking it carefully I'd rather have a join there than um, have it move anyway so uh, in a minute, once I've cut all this off, I'll turn it over, spirit levels, check that it's not twisted. If it has, I'll induce a twist into it before I do the next bit, and then that will take the twist out as I do it. So um, let this go off now, and then do some more cutting of all this off. Okay, this is all sort of gelled off now. It's been on there about half an hour, so I'm going to start cutting it before it all goes too hard. So we just get right down to the surface, get in with our cutters, and just remove these pieces of plastic and we can keep these then for the other side and then we know we'll get a pretty balanced pretty balanced uh, distance side to side so not that it matters because we're going to be sanding the living daylight out of it with coarse sanders anyway so there we go so that's that done so I'm going to put those to one side because we'll use those on the other side Right, so that's that done and now we can get our card template again and just check, see how we're looking on the line and yep, I'm happy with that. Looking good, there's a bit of a gap down here, oh, the other side's not on, that's why. There's a bit of a gap there, but a uh, bit of a gap there, but I'm not going to worry about that too much. So. We're getting there shape wise and it's all starting to come together. So the next thing to do now is to do this bit here. Now, obviously this needs to come out to here. So that's just going to come straight out. So it's going to be going to need a cut there. And this here, this here, they, they've, they've trumpeter. I don't know if you can see this, but they've actually got it like squared off. It's kind of flat here and then it just falls off. That's what maybe you think it might have been mold shrinkage, but apparently everybody's kit is the same. Not mold shrinkage, molding shrinkage. So if we look at that there, we can see that it just needs to sort of pop out there, really. So what I'm going to do is cut this whole thing out and then give it a twist, I think, or just glue it back in with some spacers behind it and then sand it and delight it to get the shape because we've got this. You can see as the light's catching it, we've got this square. Got this square edge here 
It's like a big shoulder on it. It's horrible. So I'm going to score that and cut it. Change of plan, guys. I've noticed with this one on, um, <clears throat> it basically needs to pivot around this point here, just below the shoulder. And on this one, it can actually pivot up from that point as well. And then we can put packing in here. So what I'm going to do is score it there. I'm going to score it here, cut down here. And I'm going to do is bend it up and bend this one down. Because obviously you can see as this one comes out, it's going to come up into the cardboard. So uh, that's all marked out. So we'll hold our rule here. Actually, we've got a... Um, We've got a piece of plating there we can rest the, the scraper against, so that's that, okay, done like that. And we want that deep, so there we go. And we'll do this deep now, because once we cut it, it'll all be flopping about. Again, we want to go nice and deep so that we don't put any stresses in anything. almost going through with my little bin. These little things, these little Johnson's cotton bud things make great bins for the bench. Okay, and I'm just going to come along this way and just clean out the end like so. Now this is going to be the fun one. This is going to be where it's all going to go pear shaped and move around. So start nice and gentle. Just do three or four passes with no pressure at all. And then we can start to apply the pressure. Now bending this one's going to be an issue because again it's on a curve and it won't want to bend. So what I'll probably do is go through it each end and let it bend around the middle. Notice if you are doing this guys, the order I did the scoring in, did that one first because it's got all the strength up here, then did this one because it's still got the strength down here and do this last, do the cut last. Right. So you want a nice gap in this one because it's, remember it's bending out so you're going to be closing that gap up. And I'm just going to come in again from this end. Just get something in there to allow it to bend. I'm not ambidextrous I'm afraid. Okay so that's that there. Just score that so we can get in there with the saw. Get the coarse side of the saw. through there because I think it's basically going to be solid plastic all around here. There we go, we're through. So grab my scrap blades, broken up bits, whatever, and then we can come in here and we can just snapped off. There's nothing on it together that's why. So we get another, another piece of broken off blade, get that up in there and just get that out as deep as we can. And then I'm going to score this really deep. Now 
don't know if I can reach that from behind because I've got everything in the way. Yes, I can. Now, can I actually bend that out from behind? Yes, I can, but I haven't got it thin enough to go, so... If we go through in the middle, then I'll allow it to close up. Notice I'm going to go through with the scriber, not the saw, because the scriber will leave a gap equal to the width of the scriber, whereas the saw won't. <clears throat> so I can push that out now. There we go, that's come out. You can see it's come out, there, it needs to come out a little bit more. So I'm going to close it up, and it's this that's holding it, so we'll come in there with the scriber. And I know this is like watching butchery guys, I know what you're thinking, it's like searching some of the channels. But <clears throat> sometimes you need to get a bit aggressive to get everything to go. <clears throat> there we are, see that's gone now. And now this needs to be bent in, so I'm going to put my fingers in behind there at the top. Let's see if I can bend that. Where am I? Let's see if I can bend that in. I think I'll thin it out a bit more. Right, my finger isn't behind there, I've got my fingers closed up. I'll thin that out a bit more. And then What I'm going to have to try and do is get something up behind there. Okay, get something up behind here. And then I can bend that in with that holding it in. And I can see that we need more. It's so thick in this area. There we go. You can see when you look at it end on, we've completely changed the shape and the front has come out. In behind there. You can see the front has come out to match. Now I need to do some more pulling out on the front, I think. So I'm going to get in behind there. And... Oh, it broke off. I, I knew that would happen eventually. <laughs> but there we go, it doesn't matter. It makes no difference whatsoever. Whoops, that does. So I'm just going to clean that off, that snapped off plastic. That's going to stop it going back together nicely. And now that will go back in. And now with it like that, we can see that we practically came through with that. So we can bend that in like that on the back end. We can drop that down in there. Now we're going to need packing on this bottom edge, so what we'll do is pack that out first. So I'll do a bit of measure, measuring, messing about, and then we'll put something okay, on so here we are. I've done a bit of sanding on here just to get this this edge squared up with there. So a um, piece of 2mm plastic there, piece of 1mm plastic there, and I'm just going to lightly sand over this corner of this 2mm plastic just to sort of blend it in and then when I sit this on here you will see that it sits in there beautifully and if we take our template at station 114 or just below you can see the shape is there and then if we take our station at our plate at station 134 you can see the shape is there okay 
So once again, we will take lashings of glue and stick this together anywhere it wants to touch. And then we'll go around with card and wedge the card in to take up the gaps. And yes, it's butchery, but it's it's fun. Now I've just noticed that corner's dropped down a bit, so I'm just going to lift that one up just a touch. There we go. Push that in. There we are. So now with some bits of thin card, I think there's going to be a thin piece going to go in there because we've got a bit of a gap going on. Once again, get the liquid glue in there. Oh, Jess has got her chewy going in the background, you can hear her. Someone wants to ask, why do I keep apologising for Jess? Um, I'm not apologising, I'm just saying that that's what the noise is. Um, and I've noticed we've got a hole going on here, so I'm going to get something in there. There we go, that's going to go in so far. And then we've got another piece of thin strip. And what I'm trying to show you guys is you don't need to be a rocket scientist to do this. It's just a case of wedging plastic card in there and gluing it in place. And it it's the same as having it fitting perfectly. Once it's in there, if you give it a little nudge after the glue's got in there and got to it, it will be absolutely fine. Because you're going to go over it with Sprugo anyway if you're doing anything like me. And then we another piece of thin stuff. Here's a piece of thin plastic here. <clears throat> My voice is going again. Yay, says everybody. Thank God for that. Right, that can go in there. Like so. Again, just remember every time you put a piece of plastic in, get some glue on there because uh, that's what makes it work. And there we are. So we just got to find some bits of plastic now to wedge in here. So it needs to be thicker than that. That piece there is going to be good for about that much. Right, we can see now I've done some sanding, a bit of a clean up. This is kind of getting dry now. And I've added some sprue goo here because basically this area here is a little bit lower than this area here. So you know, rather than have to mess with it afterwards, get that sprue goo in there now, let it shrink, let it do its thing. And then when we're ready, then uh, we'll go for it then. Um, so as you know from the last bit, that's glued in, that's glued in. I've cut the barrow off and what I did, I went in here with a razor saw along down here and then down as far as I get with a razor saw and then got my trumpeter saw, which is, it's actually a great little tool as long as you don't bend the blade. Uh, it comes with some spare blades as well, but it's, it's a brilliant little thing. Uh, it works when you pull, which is great. So it doesn't sort of, um, doesn't damage the blade, but a lot of these cheaper trumpeter tools, like the riveter and stuff, I couldn't get on with. I found the, 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 the actual metal wheel just dug into the plastic shaft. It was a bit of a crap design, but um, this little saw is, is, is good. So, um, <clears throat> right, so I've cut that out now. <clears throat> so that's going to get glued back in the correct position. Now, I'm just going to, something I need to do before I move forward, I need to check this shape here is correct. Because um, I don't want to do all this and then find that the actual stem is in correct shape. If the stem is the correct shape, then what I'm going to do is sand all this back flush here, glue this on and then build it up. I have also need to do some of my tricks sort of um, changing shape. You can see the shape of this, how this is like looking, this is looking here, yeah, looking along the, along the um, bow now. This is like as it's coming towards you in the water and you can see if we turn it around, you can see there that this is what Trumpeter have done. They've got this sinking in here and then coming out and then forming the bulge in the bottom, which is way too small. So that is basically going to go in there like that kind of thing. OK, so um, it needs to be sort of bent in on the top. I'm going to add some material and then sand it down and try and get a really nice fit. I want to try and keep this stem if I can, if it's the right shape. I try and keep that there because it's 
it's quite thick through here and it'll be uh, good to keep it all together rather than start chopping and changing bits in so um there we go i'm happy with that and uh hope you're happy too there's a song in there somewhere so it doesn't need too much work but um that's going to be for the next part which is going to be part six so i think this has been quite a quick one but i want to get this video uploaded because it's what is it now it's tuesday night um, and then tomorrow I can get on and get this done. I don't really want to start working too much with it because this, this joint here isn't quite hard yet, isn't quite solid. So uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow for part six. Thanks for all your messages as well. Glad you're enjoying it. Um, a lot of people are saying they wish they had the, the, the courage to have a go. To be honest, really, I don't know what you're worried about. Um, it's for example, if you cut this out, so you just cut this out and you thought, I wish I'd have done that. I'm going to, I'm going to put up with the hole the way it is. Well, all you do is you glue it back in. Okay. So you glue that back in there. You put some filler in there, sand that shape back in and it's back to square one. You know, and with all this back here, it's, it's easier still to change your mind and just go and add some strip. And, you know, you got to remember at the end of the day, guys, whatever it is, it doesn't matter how much it costs. It doesn't matter if it's a car, a plane, a boat, whatever. It's a lump of plastic and it's a material that's lovely to work with. You've got the tools, you know, you can work with it. Give it a go, you know, just give it a go. If you are, you know, if you've got another ship model lying around, an old ship model, cut the hull up and try and change the shape, even if it's already accurate. Try and give it an Atlantic hull if it hasn't got an Atlantic hull. Do something like that. So, you know, the other thing you could do is go and buy one of those cheap. I mean, that gift set thing I've got, that was 20 odd quid. You know, you get a 700 scale, build the hull up, let it go dry. And then cut sections out of it and see what you can do. It's um, it's not that difficult. If I can do it, it can't be that bad. So anyway, I'll see you uh, tomorrow, guys, and uh, for part six, and we'll go from there. And I'm going to do some scoring on here and get this all bent straight now. See you tomorrow. <laughs>